Welcome. You're listening to the I'm Wired to Inspire podcast, creatively engineered by Robin Nicole, the inspiration specialist. I'm Wired to Inspire is a powerfully packed five minute podcast filled with inspiration and encouragement to get you through your day. It's designed to inspire you to live your authentic purpose. Now stay tuned for your host, Robin Nicole, the inspiration specialist on today's episode of I'm Wired to Inspire. Hey, everyone, and thank you so much for joining me today on my podcast. I am so excited, y'all. If you are familiar with me at all, every other week I do a five-part series. And I am so excited about this one because God had given me this series in 2014. If you go back and check my IG history, you'll see that this was something that God had laid on my heart a few years ago. And he had me remix it and revamp it and bring it to you guys on this podcast. So I am so excited that I am going to reintroduce this thing to you all. But this time, God has given me four men of God to implement on the first four days of the series. And I will wrap up on Friday. And it is just so dope. I am so excited about what God has done, guys. Um, I think one of the things that you begin to learn when you surrender to God and you acquiesce to your purpose and calling on your life is that you will face opposition. There was there were so many things happening prior to this coming together. I did everything God had led me to do. Even with everyone that I chose, I prayed, I asked for two confirmations, I got confirmations on everyone, and things still didn't pan out the way that I thought they would. But God was even then working on things in me and showing me things about other people that I would not have known had I not been faced with the task of presenting this podcast and this King Me series. So I just want to say, guys, just out the gate, when you commit to living your purpose and you commit to doing the things that, you know, God has called you to do, it is going to be something. It's not going to be the usual regular one, two that everybody's accustomed to. And I was talking to one of the Kings actually, that's on this series the other day, we were wrapping things up and you know what he told me? He said, you know, people just think people posting on social media, acting like purpose is just kicks and giggles and it's just a cakewalk, but it's not, it is really something that you know, God is looking for us to do to really give him the glory and to really take it seriously. Everything is just not always about everything so perfect and well put together. It is trying, you know, so when God laid the people on my heart to do this series, he, he, he put people who were transparent and people who were real about their walks with Christ. And one of the major things that stuck out about my guest today he took it seriously. He literally studied, studied the Bible. He literally sought God on what to speak on biblically and how he wanted this message to come across to both the men and women that listen to this podcast today. So with all of that being said, guys, I am genuinely so excited. And the name of the series is King Me Series, Five Simple Yet Essential Tips for the Christian King. Now, if you read any of my information on my IG post, I encourage women. I want women to download the ebook, hit the link beneath this podcast, and you can download the ebook that goes with this series for free. I always like you guys to have a free resource to go along with what I say because the things that I put in the ebook oftentimes I do not say on the podcast. So I want to make sure you guys get the full information in totality and I want you to see how God is going to move in this thing because I know that he is. He plays no games when he's trying to get his point across and I absolutely love him complete and utter adoration for the father for that. Now this series in particular is about the characteristics of a king. OK, and having a special guest each day is dope because a man of God will join in at the end and they will join in on the segment called character, excuse me, kings with character. And they take on the special characteristic that was spoke on for each day. And I also have some great relevant quotes from great men of God like Miles Monroe, Bishop Bronner, Bishop Dale Bronner and many more. So. I want you guys to make sure you are on one accord with me on the social media aspect as well. And I want you to check out 
I'm Wired to Inspire podcast series. That's just one hashtag. If you need to catch up on all of the different series, I think I might be on series five now. So that's literally five ebooks you can download. That's 25 different recorded podcasts that you can download for free. And you can hit the link again below this to access all of that. You can also go to unwiredtoinspire.com. You can get caught up on everything. And if you're not into the podcast thing, go to my YouTube. Everything is on YouTube as well. So guys, I'm ready to jump right in. Today is the first day and it is God first in all things. You know, guys, God is the ultimate gentleman. He gives us free will. He's kind, patient, forgives us, forgives us of our sins and gives us chance after chance after chance. Okay. And if you are most like the five people that you hang around, then imagine if God was number one in your circle of five. Okay. Now, all of these amazing gentleman-like qualities would surely rub off. The world is in desperate need of men that truly know God for themselves. So having God at the center of your life sets the tone for greatness. It's not just about saying it. It's about developing it like a real-life relationship. Spending time with God, reading, meditating on his word, praising him, honoring him, and truly hearing what he has on his heart for your life. You know, and like with any relationship, it is not until we are broken all the way down that God can do his best work in us. Because after the breaking, there's a making and he can and will make all things new in you. And as a bonus, you will gain discernment with incredible accuracy. So with that, your life choices begin to evolve into something both godly and amazing. So that leads me to my first guest today. His name is Sean Lyles. And if you look below this podcast, you can get all of his information. I want you to make sure you follow his Instagram. Make sure you, you keep up with him. Hit the link in his bio. You can hear his segment of this series. Now, when God dropped him in my heart, I knew him as a brother in Christ because I know he recently married Christy Butler. Christy is very popular on Instagram and she has always uh, had a singles ministry and she's always been very honest and forthcoming about her, her walk with Christ and the, the path she was taking as she waited for her husband. And one of the beautiful things about brother Sean is that he literally heard God concerning his wife. And one of the things that I had already written down in this ebook before I even knew Sean existed, when I wrote this a couple years ago, that it was indeed important to make sure that you read and you meditate on the word. And it was confirmation because when Sean found out what his title was, he immediately began to meditate on the word of God. He began to search the scriptures to find out exactly what it is that God wanted him to say in this podcast. So just that alone really blessed me because it let me know out the gate he already had the character of a king. So this section right now is called Kings with Character. So right now, I would like to introduce you to a minister, business owner, and an incredible husband and man of God, Mr. Sean Lyles. Hi, this is Sean Lyles, and I want to say first how honored I am to be a part of this King Me series. I don't think this is a topic that is being discussed by coincidence. I do believe that this is something that is divinely orchestrated. It's not an accident to me that this word king and kingship is being thrown about in the body of Christ. I think this is an invitation for God and, and, and God giving a glimpse of what it is that he wants to do in the kingdom and what it is that he wants to do with men in particular. I do believe that it is an invitation to step into the fullness of who God made us to be. And quite frankly, it's something that's definitely needed in the earth. I think that there is a deficit in the earth. There is a lack within the earth of people who are walking into their calling and walking into the fullness of everything that God created them to be unashamedly, um, with no timidity, with no fear, with no shrinking back whatsoever, but people who are bold in who God made them to be and comfortable in what they are assigned to do. I think that now is the time that we walk into our realms of authority. We walk into our realms of influence and we walk into our realms realms of power and take back areas and arenas for the kingdom of God.
So to every brother that may be listening to this, I really want to make it clear and make it known that this is the opportunity and this is the time now to really begin to walk out and step out on faith and to trust God and what he wants to do with you and in you and through you. This is the time now for every brother to begin to rise up and, and to follow that dream and to discover that purpose and to walk into servanthood and the ministry and the, the authority that God has called him to be. Our women needed, our children needed, our brothers and our sisters need to see more examples of this. So I I really want to just encourage every man to really begin to understand what it is that God has called you to do and what it is that God wants to do with you and what it is that God has made you to do. But I don't think that we can really address being made a king without talking about putting God first and prioritizing him in everything. Um, but when I think about being a king and when I think about someone being made a king, the most shining example to me is David. The one thing that, well, the first thing that we learn about David in 1 Samuel 13 is that God says that he's found him a man that is after his own heart. So before I go any further with that, I really want to just look at the fact that God says that I found me a man and what that means. I think sometimes when we look at people in the Bible, we have this this habit of deifying them. We have this tendency to look at them as if they are perfect and they've done the unattainable because of what God has done through them. But the first thing that God says about David is that he's a man. He's flawed. He's broken. He's hurt. He's wounded. He's sensitive. He has areas. He has pride. He has ego. He's flawed. There's nothing perfect about him. He's just a man. The only defining characteristic about David is that while in that brokenness, while in that humanity, while being a normal man, he's after God's heart. The Bible says before we even knew his name, we knew that God, that David was a man after God's own heart, that David was a man who prioritized the thing that God prioritized, who desired the things that God desired. He was a man who was intentional about pursuing those things that God was thinking about and that God was mindful of. And one of the first things that comes to my mind about David is how he prioritized the presence of God. This isn't found in the story of him becoming a king, but one of the things that David is most known for is Psalms 27. And that just says, one thing have I desired of the Lord, and that will I seek for, that I may dwell in your house and inquire in your temple. So David prioritized the presence of God. He prioritized making sure that he knew that God was with him. I think too often we as men have a tendency to rely on the women in our lives to be the spiritual leaders for us. We allow our wives and our mothers and our grandmothers to pray for us rather than leading the charge. And I think what God is trying to say through David is that he also wants men that will pursue him. He also wants men that will prioritize his presence. That for me is definitely a key because it influences our walk. It influences our decisions, our speech and everything about how we go through the earth. We have to recognize that God is with us. We're not just in this by ourselves. We're not just out here trying to figure our way along and we're not just out here floundering and groping in the darkness, but we have a God who is with us. He's with us to the point to where he says that his name is Jehovah Shammah. He is the God that is with us. And he said that he would be an ever present help for us. So one of the things that I think is key into stepping into your arena and your calling is recognizing that God is with you. The Bible says that greater is he that is with that is in us than he that is in the world. So that changes your mindset. You move differently when you realize that you have a different level of backup, when you realize that heaven is backing you up as you walk through the earth. That should instill a level of confidence in us as we go forth. One of the other things that I think that um, David prioritized is the prestige of God. So in 1 Samuel, we have a scene where Goliath is issuing a challenge to the armies of the children of Israel. And David, he overhears this and he just asks one question. He just says, who is he that he should defy the army of the living God? Now, he didn't just say, who is he that he should defy the army of God, but the living God. He recognized that there was something different about the God who was with him. He recognized that his God was different than any other God that is in the earth, that he served the true and the living God, that he had a God that he heard, that he hears, that speaks. He has a God that answers. He has a God that walks with him. He has a God that is cognizant and aware of everything that about everything about David. He had a God that was far superior than any other God that he had ever heard of. His God is not a common God. His God is not an everyday God, but he serves a great God. And I think that we have to keep in mind that we're not just serving a common everyday God. We're not just serving a God who 
Sometimes he hears, sometimes he answers. This is not just a statue that's sitting on our shelf, but we're serving a God that hears our every cry. We're serving a God that not only hears, but the Bible says that if we know that he hears, then we know that we have the thing that we're petitioning for. So we serve a God that is active in our life. And as we work to make sure that we're keeping God first in every area of our life, the first thing that we want to do is we want to prioritize his presence. And the second thing we want to do is we want to recognize his prestige, the fact that there's nobody like him and that he's in a class all by himself. And then on top of all of that, David recognized the power of God. He he prioritized the power of God. While he's rehearsing and recounting his story with the lion and the bear with Saul, he says, the same God that delivered me from the paw of the lion, the same God that delivered me from the paw of the, of the bear, it will deliver me from the hand of this Philistine. He recognized that if God was able to keep him in those situations, then the same God that was able to deliver him then is able to deliver him now. His power hasn't changed. His might hasn't changed. He's not slack. His arm isn't, hasn't grown weak all of a sudden. This is the same thing to him. And that God is all powerful, almighty and able to deliver, able to restore. So if we keep in mind, number one, that God's always with us. Not only is God always with us, but we're not talking about some common God. We're not talking about some everyday God. We're talking about a God that lives and a God who is powerful and that he is willing to and wants to use all of that power on in our behalf and for us and not against us. Too often we look at situations and circumstance and we gauge our ability to navigate those based on what we can do and based on who we may know and based on our limited resources and we neglect the fact that our God is with us and the God is for us and that is the most um detrimental mistake that we could ever make when it comes to walking in the fullness of who God has called us to be. And one of the things that I also wanted to point out, one of the things that um, is, is amazing to me is that had David walked as some of us walked, had David shrunk back like some of us shrunk back, because he could have easily done the same thing as the rest of the army, right? Like they were cowering in fear. Everyone was afraid to go up before Goliath and nobody would have looked at him differently. Nobody would have shamed him. He would have fit in with the rest of the crowd. Out. But what everyone missed was the very battle that they were running for, running from, was the very battle that God was prepared to use to elevate him. So some of us are running from battles. And God is telling us to face those battles because that very battle, that very victory on the other side of that is the elevation that God has called us to. Before we can walk in anything that God has called us to in any position that he wants to put us in, um, the first thing we have to do is we have to remember to always prioritize God. We have to remember to keep him first in every circumstance, in every situation, in every area of our life. How do we do that? Number one, we prioritize his presence. We make it a purpose. We purpose in our heart. We're intentional about making sure that his presence is in our lives. The second thing we do is we recognize his prestige. We recognize that our God is different. Our God is greater than any other God. And the third thing that we do is we have to remember his power. We have to rehearse his power and remember what he's done in us and what he's done for us and what we've seen him do um, repeatedly and how we've seen him move. Recognize that our God is powerful and that he's able to do exceeding and abundantly above all that we could ask or think. So to every man that may hear this and to every brother that's listening, I really just want to continue to encourage you to begin to step out and be all that God has called for you to be, to begin to trust him to do everything that he's called you to do, and to begin to just allow him to be God in your midst. And I want you to really remember that when you're stepping into that call, one of the most important things that you can do is remember to keep God first in everything. And we do that by prioritizing his presence. We do that by remembering his prestige. And we do this by rehearsing his power that we've seen in our life. Well, I guess that's about all the time that we have. I really want to thank you for listening and for Robin for inviting me to share on her podcast. And I just really want to remind you again that one of the first characteristics of a king is that they keep God first in everything. Once again, my name is Sean Lyles, and this is a characteristic of a king. Wow. Wasn't that amazing? I am just so amazed at God and how he moves in the spirit. And, you know, I often reference David a lot when I think about myself and my journey, and I'm a woman. And there are a lot of men that I know that also reference David. And I think it is just so important that one of the great takeaways of this was the very thing we started with. You have to keep God first in all things. You really just cannot get away with, you can't get away with that. And that is indeed the paramount reason why 
We have to operate in excellence and we have to keep the father first. If we do not keep him first, if he does not get our first fruits in every area of our lives, we will be lacking. So again, I would like to say thank you so much, Brother Sean Lyles, for being a part of this podcast today. Uh, guys, again, make sure you hit the link below this podcast and you can catch up with him. You can get all of his information. Make sure you follow him on social media. And also you can follow his wonderful wife, Christy Lyles. She's on social media as well, giving relationship advice. They both have really great pages with excellent quotes, original quotes, God-given, spirit-led quotes. And I would encourage anyone listening to make sure that you listen to them and just see if God will touch you the way he touches thousands of other people who, who come across their pages and across their paths. So guys, Today was incredible. I definitely want you to be here with me tomorrow. Tomorrow we have an excellent special guest. I will reveal him tomorrow. And the day's topic will be plan greatness. Pray and work. It will be about the choices you make. It will be very much about what you're doing with your life and how you're looking at it and what steps you're going to take to get to where God is calling you to. I'm Wired to Inspire. I hope you are too. Thanks for listening to I'm Wired to Inspire podcast at I'mWiredToInspire.com. If you enjoyed the show, spread the word and be sure to hit the five-star rating on iTunes. For more information on this podcast and inspirational products and services, log on to the inspirationspecialist.life or I'mWiredToInspire.com. And remember to live your authentic purpose. Thanks again and see you next time.